Um, but hey, I'm glad you guys are here. I want to share with you guys about money today. Anybody here like money? Yes! Me! How much do you like money? I like, a lot. I like, uh, I like $20 million. A little bit? All right. So if I say, I got a few bucks here, who cares about that? Giselle does because she has one dollar in her bank account. So if I give her this, she has just increased her money by 400%, okay? So I want you to hold on to that, okay? And if you need it, if you need it, just keep it, okay? All right, just keep it. Okay, what about a $10 bill? Anybody Me? care about a $10 bill? I love $10 bills. I, th- dude, there was some people that were like, no, oh, yes. What can you do with the $10 bill? Dakota just said put it in savings. I know this dude spends all his money. Come on. Starbucks, you can get half a drink at Starbucks. You can get Renegade Raider. You can get Renegade Raider. Renegade Raider. Renegade Raider. Renegade Raider. This man right here. Now, you could, you could think that I'm giving you this money, but I want you to see me after service, okay? This man said you can buy something for your mom, okay? Have you bought something from your mom yet? Yes. Okay. All right. Hold on to that, okay? Hold on to that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> hundreds? I'm a youth pastor, bro. Um, 20s. 20s. 20s on the tables. Bro, you went from saving to Fortnite skins. You need a financial manager in your life, okay? What can you do with $20? Yes. I want... Uh, Wrong answer. Hey. Fortnite skins, a lot of coffee crossing. This guy over here is like, I can buy something for my mom. Dude, you're stealing him. All right. 20 bucks. 20 bucks. Ooh. That's actually really good. That might be the best of ours. She said gas. <laughs> two day- I can maybe go two days for 20 bucks gas. Maybe two days. Hold on. Hold on. Jake, come here, Jake. Come here. All right, come here, Jake. All right, Jake said he can get a better haircut for me than this. I cut my own hair, okay? All right, but with a raise of hands, okay, who has the better hairstyle up here right now? Is it, no, be honest. Is it Jake? If it's Jake, raise your hand. I won't take it personally, okay? Oh, you're bro. Yeah. Oh, look what you got on the top of your head, boy. Couple ladies There's in the no back. You can look at this every morning. Couple oh, haters oh, in the boy. front. And who says mine is better? Thank you. Have a seat. I rest my case. All right. All right. The money's gone, all right? Gas money, okay? Keep that, all right? All right. Jake, get a haircut, bro. Just get a haircut, okay? All right. Okay. All right. Now let's talk about Jesus. Hi, people in the back. Is that Lily? Is that Lily Carico? Everybody say hi, Lily. Shout out. What's up? Okay. Everybody has all my money now. I'm done for on Mother's Day. Okay, done for. Um, so, question for you guys. Have people ever given you money to spend freely? Like they gave it to you, no strings attached. Leslie's like, no, because I know there's something attached to this $20 bill you just gave me. Even the, even the person with $4, 400% increase right here, okay? Okay, what do you typically like to spend money that's given to you for fun on? What do you like to spend on? GameStop. Fortnite. Uh, Paul likes really lame movies, okay? Paul's that guy that goes to Dollar General and gets in the $2 movie bin. YB, yeah? Paper, air, you need money for that? I got a piece of paper for you right here, bro, okay? Okay, somebody else. What do you like to spend money on? Yeah. Jewelry. Anybody here like jewelry? Dakota does. Bling, 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 bling. Anybody else? What do you like to spend money on? Pauline, what do you like to spend money on? Food. Clothes. Okay? Okay, what about movie theater? Anybody like to go to the movie theater? Drop a bunch of money on concessions? (laughs) 
you know what, even if there's no one at the front, hey guys, everybody, don't miss this. Even if no one's at the front to take your ticket and you guys sneak into the movies. If you had a haircut like that, there's no way I'd let you in. Hey, if I sneak in the movies, right. I'm damn <laughs> just messing. Okay, hey, but for real, me at the movie theaters is like this. I think I got a picture up. That's me, okay? That's Sneaking right. in my own snacks, okay? Even if I don't have a kid with me, I'm wearing a diaper bag in, okay? Dollar Tree before the, uh, before the movie. Does anybody else do that? Does anybody else buy it? Thank you. Thank you. $20. Thank you, okay? It costs $18 to buy a large popcorn or large drink now at the movie theaters, okay? It's ridiculous. Okay. But when you use someone else's money, typically, and I know this because I was your guys' age a long time ago, um, you usually don't give it much second thought, right? Like, if at the end of this sermon, Giselle walks out with $4, um, Braden walks out with 10 and Leslie walks out, walks out with 20 bucks, and they're like, whoa, he actually gave us the money. Probably in a couple hours, if they spend that money, they're probably not thinking, like, I need to spend this money really wisely because Luke gave it to me because it was free. Because they just have it, right? You're going to put it in the bank so you can have $5 in the bank, right? It's your dad's birthday. Hit up the Dollar Tree. So, so, but what about when it's your own money and your gas in your car depends on it? Or your insurance depends on it? Or paying for your phone, which I'm sure most of you guys don't do. Um, when I first got a smartphone, guys... Back in like 2002, okay? Yeah, they barely made them. The Blackberries were pretty cool. Um, I had to pay for my own phone and the, the data, which, no, there wasn't unlimited, even unlimited internet or anything. Uh, it was like 100 bucks a month, and I couldn't even afford it. <laughs> I kept the phone for like six months, and I was like, all right, I'm going back to the flip phone. Going back to the flip phone. I think the flip phone. When you have your own money to spend and there's things that you have to use it for to be a good steward of that money. You might be a little bit slower to spend it. Right, Dakota? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fortnite skins. Okay? Because the truth is it's easy to spend money when it belongs to someone else but we're a little more careful when it's our own. And I want you guys to think about the money concept a little bit with me because that's what the parable that we're going to be looking at the story that Jesus told in the form of peril. That's what it's about today. It's about money, but it's about something deeper than that that's spiritual. Because in a spiritual sense, being faithful to what you have, being a good steward of what you have, isn't just with what you have. It's what others have. It's what belongs to someone else. And so I want to transition here a little bit. I want to ask you guys a very serious question. Are you a good steward of what belongs to other people? Scripture's very serious about that. And, and you may not even be at that level yet or that thought of like, what, is, what, what are you talking about? What belongs to other people that I can be a good steward of? Proverbs 10, 9 says this. It says this. I think we got it up, up here on the screen. People with integrity... Walk safely, but those who follow crooked paths will be exposed. Can somebody here give me a synonym or a definition of what integrity is? If someone has integrity, what do they have? Help me out. What do, what do you have? Okay, it's a little more than that, but I like where you're starting. What's integrity? What is it? Okay. You said, you, you mentioned the word pride. It, I, that you can't take pride in integrity. It's taking something very serious, no, seriously. You said trustworthy? trustworthy. It's good? Uh, when you got good morals, do the right thing. Good morals, doing the right thing. Yes. Do the right thing when no one's watching. Oh. The, <laughs> thank you from the dictionary lady herself. Okay? <laughs> integrity, according to Google, is the quality of being honest having strong moral principles, moral uprightness. And I would really like what you said, Ella. Ella said, say it again. Doing the right thing while no one's 
doing the right thing when no one's watching. Proverbs 10, 9 says that when you do the right thing, when no one's watching, you will walk safely. Meaning you will live safely. You will live a blessed, a holy, a good life that God has for you. But it says that those who follow crooked paths will be exposed. Anybody here like to be exposed for something they've done wrong, for their sin? <laughs> Jake, no, especially not my haircut, right? <laughs> I can't talk, right? Um, nobody here likes to be exposed, but think about your heart and, and, and anything that could take you away from being a person of integrity, a crooked path, someone that's dishonest, someone that speaks bad about others behind their back. Somebody that isn't uh, a good steward of something God's given them. What does that mean for us? What does it mean to walk with integrity, especially with something that doesn't belong to us? Jesus talked about, in Luke 16, this story about being a good steward and being faithful with what God's given us. And I want to give you guys some context before I get into the scripture. So if you've got your Bible, it's going to be Luke 16. Remember... If you want to take notes, we've got a great notes taking spot back here where you can grab some pens, some sticky notes, some paper, and I would encourage you guys to take notes during the sermon, okay? Whether that's on your phone, whether that's on some notepads. Because you take notes, you lead, you'll learn better, okay? Jesus is speaking to his disciples in this chapter, and he just got done speaking to the Pharisees. He just got speaking to the religious leaders, the people that were trying to prove him wrong. And Jesus is speaking about money, okay? Did you guys know that a third of Jesus' stories that he told, a third of the lessons that he told, money was in those? Did you guys know that? I didn't know that until I read that this week. Kind of like, kind of like thinking about Jesus actually talks about hell more than he does heaven. Jesus here is talking about money, so there's something important about money. And like I asked you guys earlier, who doesn't want money? Who doesn't need it? Who doesn't use it? All of us need money for things in life, okay? Especially nice when people give us money. So Jesus spent a lot of time talking about the way we use money, the relationship that we have, how we're tied to money, and the way we manage our money. And in this parable, the hero of this story, the hero of this story is actually a crook, okay? It's a crook. He's somebody who does the wrong thing. But in this story, Jesus isn't talking about the example of saying, be like the hero. He's not saying, be like the person that ended up on top. Jesus is saying, I've called you to a higher standard. Ooh, wigging out. Jesus says, I've called you to a higher standard in your life. And you guys have probably heard people preach or people teach that you want to be someone that's, that's, that does the right thing, you want to have good morals, live with integrity. But take that a little bit deeper. What does it look like for you to live to a higher standard? What does it look like for you to walk out of here today and say, everything I do is going to be committed to Jesus. I'm going to live the, a holy life, a godly life. I'm going to be a good steward. I'm going to be kind. I'm going to look out for others, not just myself. Jesus said, you are called to live to a higher standard. And he's going to show us that in this story. So in this story, we have a bad example of money, bad example of managing, being a, being a good steward of money, but a good lesson to learn from it. In this story, we're going to see that um, there's a manager of money. Okay, someone that manages money. Does anybody in here have a parent or relative that works with a lot of money in their job? Maybe they're an engineer or accountant or... Um, financial advisor or, or yeah, they, they, okay, they work with money, okay? So it's, it's someone that's working with someone else's money and they were actually wasteful with the money. This manager, this person proved they couldn't be trusted. And as a result, this person lost their job, okay? So let's read through this story and let's talk about it a little bit and see what Jesus is saying here. It's going to be in the NLT, New Living Translation. Okay, if you want to follow along, be up on the screen or uh, pull out your phone. Okay, Luke 16, 1 through 13 says this. Jesus told this story to his disciples. 
there was a certain rich man who had been managing, oh, sorry, there was a certain rich man who had a manager handling his affairs. Makes me think about somebody who makes money and has a financial advisor, has somebody watch over their money, okay? They take care of their money and, and their affairs, their things in life, okay? One day, a report came that, that, that the manager was wasting his employer's money, okay? So that would be like, um, I, have a, I have a financial advisor, not very much money in the account, but I have a financial advisor with Edward Jones. That would be like me uh, finding out that my financial advisor was wasting my money, okay? If you were in my shoes, how would you feel about if, you, if somebody that you invested your money in, you said, hey, keep it safe, hey, try to grow it, how would you feel if somebody was wasting your money? How would you feel? Mad, angry, disappointed? It'd make you want to take it all back, right? Not trustful? Somebody else said something back there? You're fired, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so that's actually what's going to happen. So he finds out this rich man finds out that someone's wasting his employer's money. So the employer called him in and said, what's this I hear about you? Get your report in order because you are going to be fired. Anybody here ever been fired from a job? Be honest. Little man. Anybody here ever been fired from the job? Couple people? Okay, your chores. You're not fired from your chores, bro. You got to go home and do your chores, okay? Especially today, it's Mother's Day. So this guy is going to be fired. The manager's going to be fired, okay? Verse 3, the manager thought to himself, ha now what? My boss has fired me. I don't have the strength to dig ditches, and I'm too proud to beg. Makes me think of people that are like, man, I'm too good for that job. I'm just going to, I'm just going to sit over here and, and, and milk this for all it's worth as long as I can, okay? I don't have the strength to do that, and I'm truly too proud to beg, Okay, nobody likes to beg, but this, this guy, this manager says, I can't do the hard work, but I'm not going to beg. So he says to himself, ah, I know how to ensure that I'll have plenty of friends who will give me a home when I'm fired. All right? Anybody got, anybody got a friend, family member that, uh, man, if you're in a rough place or think about if you're at a high school or like you know you could go to them. Anybody have somebody like that? Okay, some of you are thinking, yes, my parents. No, it won't be your parents, okay? Especially if you squander the things they give you, okay? They'll probably practice tough love and kick you out, all right? So it's nice to have friends that will, that will take care of us if we're in a bad spot. But this guy, he's wasted what he's been responsible for. So it says this is what he did, verse 5. He invited each person who owed money to his employer to come and discuss the situation, all right? So he's being crafty. Here he's like, okay, I'm going uh, I'm, I'm to invite these people who owe money to his boss to come discuss the situation. So he asked the first one, and mind you, this guy's been fired, okay? How much do you owe him? The man replied, I owe him 800 gallons of olive oil. Jeez, that is a lot of olive oil, guys. Um, I'm trying to think what we could compare that to. 800 gallons of olive oil back then would be what now? What, what would it be now? What? Normal oil, right? Yeah, dude, gas prices. Nice, gas. That'd be three gallons, 3.2 gallons of gas, okay? So the manager told him, take the bill and quickly change it to 400 gallons. So what's the guy doing? What's he being? What? He's being a thief. He's being deceitful. He's being crafty. He says, hey, take the bill and actually knock that down in half, 400 gallons, he moves on to the next one, verse 7. How much do you owe my employer? He asked the next man. I owe him a thousand bushels of wheat. A thousand bushels of wheat. Here, the manager said, take the bill and change it to 800 bushels. So don't knock it down quite as far, but knock it down to 800, okay? The rich man, it says in verse 8, had to admire the dishonest rascal <laughs> for being so shrewd. And it is true that the children of this world are more, are more shrewd in dealing with the world around them than are the children of the light. So the rich man, he finds out about this. He's like, man, he's actually, he's, he's being pretty shrewd about this. He's trying to save his, save his own butt here. And he's, he's really being like shrewd about it, even though he's being 
dishonest. He said, this is something I can kind of admire. And it says that the children of this world are more shrewd in dealing with the world around them than are the children of light. So what is he saying here? He's saying that people of the world are actually being, like, they're, they're handling things better than the people that claim that they follow Jesus. And in verse 9 it says, here's the lesson. Use your worldly resources to benefit others and make friends. Then when your possessions are gone, they will welcome you to an eternal home. If you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be, dishon- you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with the riches, the true riches of heaven? And if you're not faithful with other people's things, why should you be trusted with things of your own? Verse 13, no one can serve two masters. If you'll hate one and love the other, you'll be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. So what's the story here? The steward is responsible for things. He ends up being dishonest. Okay, he ends up getting fired for wasting his master's resources. But the rich man has many people that owe him money. He has these debtors that own this olive oil, these bushels of wheat. So the steward, the steward, he says, man, I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take this to the next level. I'm going to find a way to get my way out of this. Okay, even though his sin has been exposed... He's trying to find a way out of that sin. It makes me think about a time in my life where I didn't manage something that was given to me well. I was in high school and I was given some resources. I was given some money um, by my dad to take care of some things that I needed for my upcoming basketball season. I know probably all of you guys in the room don't, don't experience this. Maybe there's a couple that you have. But when I played sports, I actually had to buy my own stuff. I had to buy my own shoes. I had to pay for my uniform. Um, homeschool. When I, when I went out to, uh, to eat with people, I had to pay for my own food. Okay? So that was typically uh, an uh, expense I always had to cover. So I had to save money for that. Well, my dad blessed me with some money. I think it was like two or $300. He said, uh, it was before the season, he said, hey, here you go. Um, you know, I've had, I've had some work come through for me, right? And I'm going to help you kids out with some of these sports coming up. And I remember having that money. And this is before I started working very much. I was probably like 12, 13. Because um, I worked quite a bit in high school. But, but before I started doing that, I was given this money. And I, you know, all I had to do was kind of line it out. Here's what I need to buy with this. Okay, here's what I need to buy with this. But I started using that money for some things that I wanted on my own. I started using that money to, 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 to go hang out with friends and, and buy food when it wasn't something. I was like, hey, this, I should save this for the season. And then all of a sudden the season comes around and I'm like 150, 200 bucks short of what I need. So I got to go back to my dad because my sin has found me out. I was dis- dishonest with what he had given me. My sin had found me out and I didn't know how I could get through that unscathed without being found out about it. I think I, I remember I tried to maneuver my way around it, but it's like I couldn't not have a pair of basketball shoes. I couldn't not go to the athletic director and purchase my uniform. I had to make those things happen, so I had, I had to go back to my dad. I had to go back to my dad and explain, man, I wasn't responsible with the resources you gave me. And you know, in this story, Jesus says in the teaching portion of this, in verses 10 through 12, Jesus talks about faithfulness. And Jesus says, if you can be faithful in the little things, you will be faithful in the large things. Think about your faith. Think about your life with Jesus. Help me out here. Give me some feedback. What are things you can be faithful in that's little? You guys are already actually doing one of them right now. Here. What, what are you guys doing in being faithful to God right now? Right here. Just being here. You showed up. You came to learn. You worship. Whether or not you're engaged the whole time or 
and, and, and focused in, you're here. You show little faith. What's another way you can show little faith as a follower of Jesus? What's a step you got to take to follow Jesus, to be saved? We believe you have to be what? Baptized. Okay? Little faith. That's little faith. Give your life to Christ. Be baptized. Okay? Choose. Make the choice. What's another example of little faith? What's, what is it? Read your Bible. Man, if read, what was it? Spread the word. I think we might be getting into greater faith there, but Jesus puts it pretty, pretty plainly here. Go and make disciples. You want to know me? You got to know God. You got to read my word. Great examples of little faith. So Jesus says, guys, if you can be faithful in the little things, the big things in life that you need to be faithful in, you will be faithful in those things because you've put in the work. You've been responsible. But he has that caveat because he says, but if you're dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. Anybody here ever struggled with lying? Be, be bold here. Both my hands are up, guys. Okay? <laughs> Join me, bro. Join me. All right? Oh, I should have taken the money back. Okay? All right, you can put your hands down. Guys, lying and maybe having a real struggle with it doesn't happen when, when, when you lie about, you know, wrecking your car, about someone running into you when you ran into the ditch, or um, lying on a test, you know, an AP test that, that you cheated on. Or, it starts with the little things. It usually starts when we're young, probably younger age even than most of you guys are in here. It starts with the little things. But what happens when we have that cycle of being dishonest about little things? It becomes easier to what? Lie about bigger things. It becomes easier with greater responsibilities. Being honest with someone that you're in a relationship with. Being honest with your parents. Being honest about your faith. If your faith is actually really little and really weak. Or if it's great. If you're dishonest in little things. You will be dishonest with, great respons- with greater things. Greater responsibilities. I've struggled with that a lot of my life. And I had seasons in my life when I was your age or a little younger where I could be honest about the bigger things because I was still being honest with the little things. I remember I used to, I think I've told you guys this before, but I remember I used to lie every once in a while to, to get myself out of coming to church. All right? Don't judge too hard. Or some people are like, yeah, I've done that too. All right? All right? My family went to church every week. Okay? We went every Sunday, every Wednesday. We were a church family in everything. But I get to that point, 12, 13, 14, somewhere around there, I was like, man, this is too easy. I'll just fake sick, you know? This is too easy, right? The minute they go out of the driveway, bam, straight to the video games for four hours, okay? Until they literally would come back in the driveway. That is terrible, okay? Terrible. But you, some of you have probably done it too, okay? But that's being, I think that's being dishonest in something little, like lying about being sick, all right? I'm not even talking about lying and not going to school. I'm talking about going to church. But serious, seriously, if you're dishonest in the little things, you guys know what you've been, been dishonest about in your life. You know what sin maybe hasn't found you out that you've lied about. Know that Jesus says if you do those things, you won't be able to have great faith. You won't be able to be a good steward with the greater responsibilities that Jesus has for you. And Jesus goes back to money in verse 11. He says, if you're untrustworthy, if you're dishonest, if you lie about worldly wealth or, or, ble- or things you're blessed with, resources, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? Makes me think about the moment we meet Jesus. Each of us is going to meet Jesus face to face if you put your faith in him. Whether that's in the near future If God calls you home soon or that's when you're old and you pass away, each of us is going to meet Jesus face to face and imagine being there face to face with Jesus and him talking to you about honesty. Him talking to you about if you're an untrustworthy servant. If the things that God gave you you're responsible with. 
Because how can we be trusted with the true riches of heaven, with the gifts of the Spirit, if we're not responsible for the things of the world? And Jesus takes it further. He says, if you're not faithful with other people's things, why should you be trusted with things of your own? Here's the bottom line, bottom line guys. You've got to be faithful with what God's given you. Your relationship with him. Your relationship with others. Your integrity. Your culture says integrity doesn't matter because you can be and do and say and keep to yourself whatever you want. It is all about you. And your culture is easily my culture too. Just, it just looks different. It's all about me. It's all about what I want. It's all about what I gauge is right and wrong. But Jesus says, you have to be faithful to me. Scripture is clear about that. It says in Colossians 3, 23. It talks about no matter what we're doing, we're called to work as if, as if it's for God and not another person. Can you put up that verse, Colossians 3, 23, for me real quick? I think I had it on there. Maybe toward the end. There we go. Thank you. It says, work willingly at whatever you do as though you're working for the Lord rather than for people. What does that mean? It means that in everything you do, you do it for God. So when you're hanging out with a friend, when you're texting with a friend, you're playing games with a friend, when you're at prom, when you're at work, when you're playing sports, when you're with your family, whatever you're doing, it says whatever you do, do it for God as if you're doing it for, for those worldly people. Do it as though you're working for God. And guys, nothing else will matter in your faith. You will be just like I've been at times in my life, an empty, a, a empty flaky shell of a Christian that's dead inside. If we don't do what we do for God, the purpose of our life is to bring God glory. How do we do that? We be trustworthy. We be faithful to God. We read the word. We be here to fellowship, but we don't just say, man, I, I'm doing the bare minimum. So the other things that people can't see, the other things that people don't know about me, they just don't matter because then you just end up being a shell. You end up being like, like Jesus said, the Pharisees where they're whitewashed tombs. They looked real nice on the outside, but they're filled with dead things on the inside. I, I shared it a couple weeks ago in the sermon over there. The sin in your life doesn't make you a bad person. Okay, and a lot of you probably have believed and thought in your life, man, like if I sin, I'm bad and I gotta come to Jesus. He's gotta make me good. And then the next time I sin, the cycle over and over and over. Jesus washes us clean from our sin. He forgives it and he forgets it, but sin isn't something that makes you a bad person. It makes you dead inside. It's the same way with me. If I'm selfish or if I'm angry or if I'm dishonest, it makes me dead inside. There's nothing worse. You guys know there's nothing worse than coming to the end of the day and just not being fulfilled about what your day was like about what God did in your life, if God showed up anywhere in your life, if you're not treating everything to give him glory. And God says, Jesus says in this verse, he says, you want to be trusted with more? Do you want me to bless you? Do you want me to do amazing things in your life? He says, you got to be faithful in the little things. And you got to take a step forward. You can't be dishonest like this steward here. You have to be faithful with what matters. I think I have a couple, uh, a couple application points. Can you put up the first application point for me, Sam? Here's what I want you guys to take with you. If you, didn't, if you don't take notes at all, that's, that's okay. Um, but it's good to take notes. That way you can look back. And some. So I'd encourage you guys to take notes on these three things to take with you this week about faithfulness. Number one, be faithful with what belongs to others. It's a matter of integrity. It's about what nobody sees that you do. Think about your relationships with others. Think about the way you view others. Think about your purity. 
and be faithful with what belongs to someone else. God has always been faithful to you. Be faithful with what belongs to someone else. The second thing is this. Number two, live by the higher standard that Jesus had called you to. I said that at the very beginning. Guys, we have to live by the standard of Jesus, striving to be holy, striving to be righteous, but knowing that we can't do it ourselves. We cannot do it ourselves. I mean, I have people in my life that help me and people in my life that I try to help others to be a better follower of Jesus. But when we try to do that, when I and those people try to do that on our own, we always fall short of God's glory. We always fall short and we always sin. And then what do we do with that sin? We beat ourselves up about it. We keep it to ourselves. We become dead inside. Don't be okay with living that way. Live by the higher standard that Jesus has called you to. Take the next step in your faith. Maybe it's confessing or admitting something to somebody you can trust. Maybe it's your life group leader. Maybe it's your parent. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's a good friend of yours that loves Jesus. But be open about it. Don't keep it to yourself. Live by the higher standard that Jesus has called you to. I think that's my favorite one out of these three. Live by that standard. Take that with you guys this week. And then the third one is this. Use what God has blessed you with to bless others and bring more people to Jesus. It makes me think about this, uh, this, this call and this mission that I saw years ago um, from another youth pastor, and it was the mission of one. It's about finding one person in your life that you need to bring to Jesus. If you're faithful in little things, God will give you greater responsibility, greater strength in the large things, like reaching your friends for Christ. I know how hard it is, not the same extent you, do guys, you guys do, but I know how hard it is to try to bring your friends to Christ. I don't know how hard it is to be an effective witness in your schools. I don't know how difficult that is. I, I pray that God would give you guys the strength to stand up for what's right and what's godly because I know that blessing others with the way that you live for Christ, that's hard to do. But if you realize, man, i got to live to a higher standard. Jesus has to be my source of joy and contentment. And I have to be faithful to him. The same way Jesus says, being faithful in the little things. Being trustworthy. Being so of integrity. When you do that, you will bless others. Many of you have seen that happen here in our youth. When you, when you bring others into a place where they feel loved. Where they feel welcomed. It has to be a constant, ongoing process because of the things that we face. And so here's what I want us all to do. Close our eyes. I want to pray something over you guys as you get ready to leave. Go out for Mother's Day and bless your families, bless your moms, and consider this message on faithfulness. I want to pray this over each of you guys today. And I want to ask that when you leave after we're done praying, that either you, you take a moment quietly in this gym and, and you just spend a moment with God and talk, talk to him about your faithfulness him and about how you want to grow and be faithful in the little things. I would encourage you and challenge you to do that. And I would also challenge you to not walk away and forget that God has called you to be faithful and to be holy and to live with integrity. So God, please speak over these students. Speak into their lives. Let them find you every day in the little things. Let them be faithful. Help me be faithful to you so that we can be responsible in the large things. I don't know what it is for them, God. I don't know who their one is, who their person is that they need to bring to know you. And maybe it happens by them coming here. Maybe it happens by them bringing a friend to CIY or, or joining us this summer, God, for a, a bunch of crazy, uh, amazing things. God, I don't know what tool you're going to use to help them bring their friends to Christ. But I know each of them have at least one person that doesn't have a true faith and depth with you. So I ask that you challenge and use them to do that, Jesus. Jesus, I ask that you speak to each of us as we leave here. 
Help us remember that you've called us to be faithful. You've called us to be holy. And Jesus, as we get ready to close and and leave this place, and as we have just a little bit of music play softly behind us, and maybe we take a moment either in our seat or somewhere else in the gym, we don't just rush to the next thing, God, but we consider how you want us to be faithful. As we have those moments, God, I ask that you would challenge each of us in the way that we need to be challenged to be faithful to you in the little things so that you can trust us with the greater things. So God, we give you this day and we ask these things in your name. Amen.